What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to easily deploy Python applications to AWS LightSail. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to deploy a Python application to AWS LightSail in this video today. Now, LightSail is an AWS service that allows us to rent a VPS, so a virtual private server, and it's a very simple and straightforward way to deploy a Python application. So this is not going to be very complicated today, and you can deploy whatever application you want, a simple Python script like a chatbot listening at a port, a Flask application, a Django application, a fast API application, it doesn't matter, but if you want to deploy the exact same application that I'm going to deploy here for demonstration purposes, you can go to my GitHub repository, you will find a link in the description down below. Uh, to this YouTube tutorials repository here you want to go to to do list app flask this is the thing that I'm going to deploy today but as I said you can deploy a hello world application a chatbot it doesn't matter uh, the process is the same so what you want to do is you want to go to the AWS console I'm going to assume that you already have an account I'm not going to guide you through that process and once you are in the AWS console you want to look for light sale so you want to search it here in my case I have a link because I already used it recently and here now we want to create a new instance. So I'm going to cl uh, click here on create instance. In my case, it already suggests the instance location Germany. Um, I'm going to pick this one because I'm living in Austria, which is uh, close to Germany. So I'm going to just uh, go with this one, but you can customize this if you want to. And down here now you can make a couple of choices. So you can choose the platform, the operating system, and there's also blueprints here. So for example, I'm going to go here now with Linux. And if you want to go with Linux, you have, uh, you can choose here between WordPress and Node.js and also Django, even if you want to. Um, but you can see there is no Flask option. So since I'm going to deploy a Flask application, I'm going to go with the operating system only. And I'm going to go with Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. So this is just going to be, <clears throat> sorry, a, a raw Ubuntu server. So I'm going to be able to log into it with SSH, uh, which actually brings us now to the next step. We need to somehow get into this server. How do we connect to the server? And what we can do here in this creation process is we can upload uh, an SSH key pair. Now, in my case here, I have one uploaded already, but how do you do that? What you do is you open up your command line, you go to some directory, and you run the command ssh.keygen. This command allows you to generate a public and private key pair. So what you want to do is you want to um, specify a location where you want to save this. The default here is going to be the .ssh folder of your user, and the default name is going to be idrsa. In my case, what I did is I called this home neural9.ssh and then idrsa aws now i'm going to call this now aws2 um, you can also choose a passphrase which i would recommend i'm not going to choose one now here for this one um, then you want to use the same passphrase again and then you have this key in your um, in your directory so i can go to dot ssh and i can say ls and i'm gonna grab here to not show all of my keys the id rsa aws keys you can see that I have uh, the ID RSA AWS key uh, one, the private and the public key, and now I have the second one as well. So this is what you want to do. You want to generate these keys and you will have one private key, one secret key and uh, one public key. You never want to share the private key or the secret key. This is something that should only be present on your machine or on your machines. Um, you want to upload the public key. So what you do is you generate a key pair the way I did it right now, and then you upload to this um, to this creation process here, you upload the public key. So you're uploading the ID RSA AWS dot pub key to this um, dialogue here. Um, once you have that, you can then also say you want to enable automatic snapshots, for example, every time every day at a specific time, you want to make, uh, make a backup. Um, and then you can choose the plan that you want to go with. So this depends, of course, on what type of application you're running. I'm just going to go here now with the $7 plan where you have one gigabyte of RAM, you have two uh, virtual CPUs, 40 gigabytes of SSD storage and uh, two terabytes of transfer. So you can use uh, two terabytes of um, data transfer here with this plan. Um, it doesn't matter which one you choose. It just matters that it's enough for you uh, or to support your application. I'm just going to go with this one now. Uh, then we can choose a name for our machine. Let's call this Ubuntu tutorial. 
um, and then we can create the instance. So this instance now will go live after some time and we will be able to easily connect to this instance because we provided a public key and we have the private key. It's important the private key has to be located, the private and public key have to be located in your .ssh folder, otherwise you need to specify the path to them uh, manually, but if they are in your .ssh folder on Linux, you can just go and say SSH into the server, it's going to recognize the public key or, and the private key, uh, and you can easily do that. So <clears throat> I can restart or I can reload the page here. Uh, it seems to be live. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up my terminal and I'm going to say, I'm going to go first of all into, or actually I don't have to go into it. You can see here you have an IP address. So I can actually go ahead and copy this IP address and say SSH Ubuntu, this is the user that you want to use, at IP address. Now in my case here, it asks me now if I want to um, connect because there's a fingerprint here, I can say yes. And then I can use my password for my SSH key. Uh, because for the key that I'm actually using, I specified now the um, I specified a passphrase, and I need to enter this passphrase to be able to use it. Now I'm connected onto the server, I can clear this lock here. And now I have the command line access to the server. So what do I want to do here now on the server to deploy the application? Well, I need to get the application onto the server. Now we can check if Python is installed already. In this case, it is it's Python 3.10, which is fine. And for our project now for our to do list application, we need to make sure we have a requirements txt file. Now, this is not a necessity, you can also just manually install the uh, dependencies, but you want to make sure that you have all the things that you need to make this application uh, to run this application on the server. So in this case, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to navigate here. I'm going to open up a second command line, I'm going to navigate to my uh, folder, which is the current folder. And in here, I have my to do list app flask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use SCP to upload this to the server. How I'm going to am I going to do that, I'm going to say SCP dash R for recursive because it's a, a directory here to do list app flask and then Ubuntu at the IP address that we just used, which is this one here. At this and then colon slash home slash Ubuntu. I want to place this at this directory. I'm going to do this, then this is going to upload the files. And now if I run LS on the server, you can see I have my to do list application flask on the server. Now on the server, of course, I don't have flask installed. So what I want to do is I want to say pip three install dash r requirements txt. Uh, in this case, now it says I don't have pip installed. So I need to say sudo apt install Python three pip, but this is probably going to lead to the next problem, which is it doesn't have the uh, repositories up to date. So we're going to say sudo apt update. And then we're going to run the same command again. So sudo apt update to get all the repositories, then we're going to download the pip tool with the pip tool, we're going to install flask, and then we can run our application. Um, now, first of all, what we're going to do here now is we're going to say the same thing as before. There you go, install pip. Uh, another thing to consider is what kind of port or what port you want to run your application on. Now, if you just use the run command, if you just want to run your flask application in debug mode, you can do that at port 80 and access, <clears throat> you can access the server or the application at this port. But you're going to have troubles running this as a service and so on. I'm going to just restart these services now here. Um, so it makes sense to run the application not on port 80, because this requires usually root privileges if you want to run on a port less than 1024. Um, because of that, you want to be running on a higher port like something 8080, 8000 or something like this. And for this, you need to set up a firewall option, but we're going to talk about this here in a second. So now I'm going to use pip to install everything in the requirements txt file, this doesn't have to be just flask, it can be scikit-learn if you have a machine learning or tensorflow if you have a machine learning application. Um, but once you have everything installed, you should be able to run Python three um, app.py. Uh, or probably sudo dash e Python three app py. And then it's listening here on 0000. So it's binding on all the addresses. Um, and what we should be able to do now is we should be able to 
open this and you can see my application is available at this IP address. If you right now were to type in this IP address, probably when you're watching the video, no longer, but if you were to type this IP address while I'm recording this video, you would be able to see this application as well. And I can use the functionality of this application here. And I can also see that it's running uh, on the server. I can also close it. Um, and now it's gone. So this is of course not the best practice way or in any way a good way to do this because first of all, we're running this in debug mode. We're running this with the, um, oh, I don't have new Vim here, so I'm gonna use Vim. Uh, we're running the app.run command. We're not doing it professionally because professionally we would use something like uh, G unicorn or unicorn, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, which we're going to do here in a second. And also we want to be running this as a service because otherwise if I log out of the terminal, if I end the session, it's also going to end the server. So it's not going to be running if I'm not in the command line. So what we want to do is we want to set up a service. How do we do that? First of all, we get out of this file here. Uh, and I'm going to say now, uh, pip3 install g unicorn or unicorn. Uh, this is going to allow us to serve this as an actual server. Um, also, as I mentioned, we want to have a certain firewall rule, we want to go to networking here and we want to set up or actually is this the proper way to do that? Let me just double check where I have to do this. Uh, instances, manage, there you go networking. And here now I want to add a rule to the firewall right now, as you can see, there's the SSH axis, there's the HTTP axis. Uh, I also want to add now the rule that I want to be able to get traffic at port 8000. So custom TCP 8000. And then I can just go ahead and uh, create this rule. And now this is going to also be possible before that I'm not going to be able to target port 8000 with the application, which I want to do. So we're gonna say, let's go to the app, or actually, we don't need to go to the app because we're not going to be uh, running it like this. What we want to do is we want to use um, G unicorn to run this. So I want to run this as a service. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file in etc system D system. And here now I'm going to create a service and I'm going to call the service to do app dot uh, service. And in this file now I'm going to specify certain things. First of all, I'm going to say in square brackets unit is going to be having the following fields here description is going to be equal to to do application after is going to be equal to network targets. Then I'm going to say here service in square brackets, I'm going to say user equals Ubuntu, which means I'm not going to run this as root, the service is going to be ran by the user Ubuntu. Um, the working directory is going to be the following slash home Ubuntu, uh, maybe to prevent problems here. Oh, I have a problem because I didn't open this in root. So let's actually leave this here. And also let's rename the folder because white spaces are always problematic. I'm going to move the to do list application to a folder called to do app. So I just renamed it here. Um, and now I'm going to run the same thing, but I'm going to do this with uh, pseudo permissions, I'm going to say pseudo dash E um, this and I'm going to say now again, unit description equals to do application. Let me just see if I can save this works. Okay. Um, then after is equal to network target, and then we define the service here. User equals Ubuntu capital U here. And then we want to say uh, working directory is equal to slash home slash Ubuntu slash to do app. And then the exec start the command basically that we want to run is home um, Ubuntu <clears throat> dot local slash bin slash g unicorn, which is the path to our g unicorn uh, binary here. If you have a different path, of course, specify the path to the application here. Uh, dash W for workers, we're going to use just one worker. The reason here I want to use just one worker is because this specific app, the to do list application stores the to do in 
uh, the RAM in, in the in the process itself. So it doesn't use a file or a database to do that. Because of that, if you have four workers, you're going to be connected to one of them, and it's not going to have the previous states of the other ones. So if you have an application with a database, you can use multiple workers. In this very specific case of the to-do list application that has just a list in the process itself, one worker is uh, the way to go. I'm going to say I want to bind this to 0, 0, 0, 0, port 8000. And I want to use the app py file and the app of the app py file. So app colon app. Restart is going to be set to always. I always want to keep the service running. And I'm going to say actually this in square brackets again, wanted by equals multi dash user targets. So I'm going to save this now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say system pseudo system CTL daemon reload. Then I'm going to say system CTL start to do app uh, like this. And then we can check the status of the to do list uh, of the to do app. And you can see it's active and running. Uh, I can also enable it to be enabled at startup. So whenever the server a server restarts, it's going to also start the to do list application. Um, and now actually, I should be able to uh, specify here, the port 8000. Not 80,000, but 8,000. So let's just try again here on this port. This should not be working. Uh, I want to do this on port 8,000. And now I get this to do list application here. As you can see. So this is how you do that you run this as a service because even now if I disconnect, um, even if I disconnect now from this um, machine, you're going to see that this is still continuing to run. So I can still delete stuff, I can still add stuff and so on. And this is how you basically deploy a Python application onto AWS Lightsail. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.